Ah, summer break. A time for leisure, recreation, and taking her easy. Unless you're me. Ah! E3 used to be a big part of the wider gaming industry, but as time went on it seemed less and less necessary. Companies either didn't have a lot to show or did their own presentations throughout the year. The shows were still generally good in my opinion, but it was clear E3 wasn't reaching the same heights it was during the early 2000s. And then 2020 hit, obviously leading to no show that year. In 2021 they tried to bring it back, but it was clear that after 2019, E3 was dead. But have no fear because Jeff Keighley is here to sort of revive E3. Summer Games Fest is the closest E3 replacement that has arisen in its absence. However, the big three, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, still hold their own dedicated presentations. So Summer Games Fest is kind of like the dog under the table trying to get the scraps from the big boys. I kid, there's definitely cool stuff here and I think the event has only gotten better over the years. So I figure today why not talk about all of the big presentations that have been happening during this summer of gaming. Nintendo has confirmed that they're going to be holding a Direct at some point this month, but they give pretty much no notice to these things, so I figured I'd try to just get one video talking about the other big three presentations before their old news, and then I can just make the Nintendo Direct its own dedicated video if I have something to say. And besides, everyone knows Nintendo fans only care about their own games anyway. Also, just to be clear, I won't be talking about every game shown off at these presentations. I'll just be mentioning the bigger games and the ones that interest me. Well, without further ado, let's look at the big presentations from this 2024 Summer of Gaming to figure out who did it best. You know, no matter what happens, I can always rely on Sony doing one thing every year. They always leave me, without fail, asking what is going on over there at that company. You see, Sony tries to do what Nintendo does by splitting their usual one big presentation they would normally have during E3 into three smaller presentations throughout the year. Normally, this is in February, June, and September. The problem is that they aren't it, Nintendo? Each presentation ends with fans feeling underwhelmed because they never have enough to show. And it just boggles my mind why they continue to do this because the solution is right there. 3 minus 2 equals 1 and that's all they need. Microsoft does this and while I wouldn't say that that company's in the best spot either, they at least know how to generate hype around their presentations. There hasn't been a state of play in recent memory that has been mostly well received because of this problem. However, I thought this one was at least pretty decent, but that's because they just barely saved it by the end by having two games I'm excited for back to back ending it. Otherwise it wasn't that good and if you're not a fan of either of the last two games I'm talking about there's honestly not a lot here. But enough talking, let's get on to the show itself. This state of play was held on May 30th and opens up with an extended look at the game Concord. How extended is too extended. 10 minutes on this one game. I mean, I know Sony's been struggling to find things to put in their presentations lately, but opening it up with a 10 minute deep dive into a game that most people just found unappealing? Really? I honestly liked the cinematic trailer and thought it was pretty entertaining, but guys, I don't know if you remember, so let me refresh your mind. This is a video game presentation. Oh, and don't even get me started on the fact that this is a live service Overwatch clone. The characters are fun, the abilities look cool, and the fact that they emphasize the story and character relationships is amazing to see, but the kind of game it is just makes me lose interest. If this was a single player focused game where you explore planets in the Concord Galaxy as an expressive cast of characters with a multiplayer mode on the side, I would be so down to try this. But as it stands, this just blends in with all the other dozens of live service games out there. Maybe I'll give it a shot if people say it's good, but but it's not looking likely as all I've seen is people trashing it online. God of War Ragnarok is coming to PC. That, that, that's it. I mean, it's cool, but did this need to be one of the highlighted games in this presentation that already didn't have a lot going for it? Like, you open it up with 10 minutes of corporate slop and then follow it up with a port that realistically should have already been out? Really? That's your first 12 minutes? Moving on, Dynasty Warriors Origins looks cool, but this honestly isn't my kind of game unless it has Zelda, Fire Emblem, or Persona in it. Maybe I'll give it a try though when it comes out, we'll see. Marvel Rivals is getting a closed beta on PS5. Why are you feeling the need to bloat this state of play with these live service games? Sure, I just skipped a few games I didn't have much to say about, but why is Marvel Rivals here? Could this not be at the bigger Summer Games Fest next week where people might actually care about it? Believe it or not, I'm actually sorta interested in Marvel Rivals because it's free and I like Marvel, so I'll probably at least try it when it comes out. But the fact that this already slim presentation has two Overwatch clones in it is 
Honestly, such an accurate representation of the industry right now. Where Windsmeet looks like a fun, fast-paced Souls-like, but I wish we got to see more gameplay. It's coming out in 2025 though, so get ready for this to be at the next day to play. Until Dawn is getting a remaster. I, I, I seem to have lost the clip here. Well, well I, I guess this one works. I mean, it's cool, but did this need to be one of the highlighted games in this presentation that already didn't have a lot going for it. Silent Hill 2 looks pretty cool. I never tried this series out, but I'm interested and I've heard good things about it, so maybe I'll pick it up later this year. Hmm, it seems like the presentation is already almost over. What else could they show off? Today, I am so excited to share the first full gameplay trailer for Monster Hunter Wilds. <gasps> okay, guys, lock in. It's go time. Oh, man, the game looks so good. The environment is so expressive and varied. The new monsters look so cool, and the bird thing you can ride is awesome. I'll be honest, there wasn't a lot to go off here with this trailer, but it's still getting me really hyped to see more. This is what saved the presentation for me, because I wasn't expecting it. However, I've seen a lot of people who aren't Monster Hunter fans thinking that this last game was the only thing that was worth noting in this presentation. Presentation. And that game is Astrobot. This is a full on sequel to the game Astro's Playroom on PS5. That game is one of my favorite pack ins of all time as it shows off the capabilities of the PS5, celebrates the history of PlayStation, and provides a really fun platforming game. Astrobot seems to be greatly expanding on what the original game did with creative new level themes and abilities. It also seems to be focusing on the history of Sony's characters, which is a cool way to continue the celebration aspect of the original. This game is coming out in only three months, too which is really soon, honestly. Look, I like Monster Hunter Wilds and all, but I feel like we only got to see a small piece of what that game has to offer, while Astrobot absolutely blew me away. I'm definitely going to be picking this one up when it comes out. And that's it for Sony. So how did I feel about the presentation overall? Well, everything before Monster Hunter and Astrobot was kind of eh, to be honest. There were a few things I was interested in, like Dynasty Warriors, Where Winds Meet, and Silent Hill 2, but otherwise the whole thing felt oddly bloated even though they didn't have a lot to show in the first place. And Concord taking up 10 minutes, like come on! However, Monster Hunter Wilds and Astro Bot definitely saved the presentation for me, and I'm really excited to play both of those. Overall, I'd give the presentation, like, a B-, minus, which may come off as too generous, but you have to keep in mind that Monster Hunter is one of my favorite game series of all time, and Astro's Playroom is one of my favorite 3D platformers in recent memory. But, now it's time to go on to the second big presentation held on June 7th, Summer Games Fest. This presentation opens with Jeff Keighley existing, which of course results in a round of applause. Then the first trailer is a new LEGO game. Oh, what could it be? Is it a big new game like the Skywalker Saga? Is LEGO finally back? Huh? So you're telling me that the PlayStation exclusive Horizon series is getting a LEGO game that was not announced at the Sony state of play. They were already struggling to fill up that presentation, so why not show it there? Is it because the trailer wasn't ready? Well, I doubt that, because normally companies have things ready way in advance. Was it because it's also coming to Switch and Steam and not just PS5? That's the more likely option, but it still doesn't make any sense. You can announce a game for one platform and then later clarify that it's coming to others as well. Just look at the Monster Hunter Wilds trailer in the state of play. It says PS5, but later when the trailer was put on the Monster Hunter YouTube channel, it also says Xbox and Steam. Do I think companies should do this? No, but they do it all the time, which makes me wonder why they decided not to for the LEGO Horizons game. Nonetheless, the game looks pretty cool, and the fact that it's coming to Switch is honestly wild. I never would have guessed that, but it is the most kid-friendly console out right now, so it makes sense for a LEGO game to release on it. I haven't played either of the Horizon games, though, so while I may pick it up because I'm a big fan of LEGO games, I'm not super hyped for it because I just haven't tried out the rest of the series. A new Harry Potter Quidditch game was announced. As someone who has absolutely no interest in Harry Potter, all I can say is it looks cool and I hope the fans are happy. You're, you're gonna be hearing a lot of that today. Cuff Bus looks like a fun multiplayer romp and the fact that it's being made by one person is really cool. Star Wars Outlaws also got a new trailer. I like the idea of an open world Star Wars game. I think it has a lot of potential. However, this game seems to be filled with the usual Ubisoft stench, so I may pick it 
it up, but probably when it gets a huge price cut like a month after it comes out. Neva is a new game for the developers of Greece, and it looks really cool. I haven't played Greece, but I've heard good things about it, and the art style alone is enough to get me interested. Civilization 7 is cool. I've never played a game in this series, but I know it's pretty popular, so maybe when this comes out, I'll give it a go. Once Human looks pretty cool, it's an open world multiplayer survival game, and it has a free demo on Steam. I haven't gotten to try out the demo yet, but I do plan on it because it looks like a really fun game with friends. Next, it looks like some developer guests are coming on. Whoa! I was not what? expecting this! And he's talking all about the game! Alice has been showing off their stuff at the Xbox showcase the last few years, so I was honestly caught off guard to see this game here. Regardless, the game looks really good. I'm trying not to spoil too much for myself with this game, but I did watch the trailer here and I'm super excited. It's very Persona-like and seems to be taking elements from the Persona formula and putting it into a more fantasy or traditional RPG setting. It does have a lot of its own identity though, and I'm hyped to see what cool ideas will make their way into this game. Street Fighter VI is getting some DLC, including a collab with Fatal Fury. As someone who doesn't follow fighting games, I don't have a lot to say other than looks cool and I hope the fans are happy. Tears of Metal is a roguelike co-op hack and slash that looks pretty fun. It seems to have more depth to it too, with different units you can take into each run. Next, Fatal Fury was actually announced after the tease that was the Street Fighter VI trailer. As someone who doesn't follow fighting games, I don't have a lot to say here other than looks cool and I hope the fans are Happy. It was then announced that Blumhouse, the company known for many recent horror films like the FNAF movie, is getting into video games. They want to take independent horror game developers and give them the funding and platform that they need to be successful, which is really cool to see. I love the emphasis this show has on indie games and how important they are to the wider gaming industry. I'll talk more about this when I give my overall thoughts on the presentation, but the fact that this show highlights indies and AAA games equally is something that you don't really see at any of these events, and I love that. Anyway, Anyways, time for Killer Bean. There seems to be a lot of hype around this one, but I, I just don't get it. It's not that the game looks bad or anything, not at all. I just don't know anything about the Killer Bean franchise, so all the hype surrounding this game just seems odd to me. Like, what even is Killer Bean? I've seen it in memes and stuff, but that's about it. Oh man, all the Killer Bean mega fans are gonna destroy me in the comments, aren't they? Outer Sloth is yet another indie game fun shown off, and it's made by the developers of Among Us, Inner Sloth. This is cool to see, and the games they showed off look pretty creative and fun. They also showed some of the Among Us TV show. I didn't know this was a thing, but cool, I guess. The next trailer was another look at Sonic X Shadow Generations. The game looks really fun, and it's cool to have a remastered version of one of the most well-received Sonic games in recent memory. It has the usual Sega Digital Deluxe Edition slop, but hey, it's still a remaster of Sonic Generations. DLC for Alan Wake 2 was shadow dropped, and as somebody who has never played this game, all I can say is looks cool and I hope the fans are happy. If you're watching SGF on TikTok Live right now, you can comment HSR in the chat to claim a special in-game bundle for Honkai Star Rail of Stellar Jade from TikTok Game Rewards. Hyper Lightbreaker looks fun. It's another open world co-op game and I really like the art style of it. I know this was a highlight of the show for a lot of people too, so I'll have to keep my eye on this one. A trailer for the first big POW world update was shown off. It looks like they're adding a ton of new stuff, which is pretty cool. It comes out later this month and I've been looking to get back into the game, so this is pretty good timing. Valorant's coming to console. As someone who does not play Valorant, all I can say is cool and I hope the fans are happy. Our limited beta starts June 14th and you can sign up right now at beta.playvalorant.com. In all seriousness though, this is a pretty huge deal, so it's going to introduce this massive game to a brand new audience. Then we cut to a random trailer of Inside Out 2 that features a video game character in it. No, it's not a popular one. It was made specifically for this movie, but I guess it relates to Summer Games Fest? Sorta? Next, it's... Whatever this is, what am I even looking at here? After watching Al from Al's Toy Barn screw around with Bojack the Lumberjack, it's finally time for the moment I was waiting for. Yeah, so for some reason, Monster Hunter Wilds is also at Summer Games Fest. But it's not just the same trailer again, they had a whole new trailer for this presentation. It was pretty good, I love how the new monster they showed off, Balahara, interacts with its environment. And this new monster that we only saw for a second and may or may not be the flagship looks cool. But 
the trailer just didn't have a whole lot other than that. I wish they just combined the two trailers from the two presentations because I feel that would have made the official gameplay reveal have a much greater punch. I'm seeing a lot of Monster Hunter fans underwhelmed by this new game, and I think a lot of that is because they split up the initial announcement like this. I don't know what kind of deal they made with Sony or Summer Games Fest that resulted in this, but I think it's hurting the hype for this game a little bit. Honestly, I think they should have just shown the first and second trailers combined at Summer Games Fest because that would have been a major highlight for a lot of people. Regardless, I'm still excited about the game, and it's clear that there's still a lot they want to show us before the game comes out, so... I'll look forward to it. Then the show ended with Phantom Blade Zero, which looks fun with its blazing fast combat. Man, if I had a nickel for every time Monster Hunter Wilds was the second to last game shown off in a video game presentation in mid-2024, I would have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? And that's it for Summer Games Fest! I honestly thought it was pretty good. There was a ton of stuff shown off and it was super fast paced. However, there wasn't anything big that appealed to me personally. Sonic looks great, we got some new Monster Hunter info, and Metaphor has me really excited. But those were all games we already knew about going into the presentation. There weren't any crazy reveals or world premieres that appealed to me other than just me thinking it looked cool. And I think that's the inherent downside to Summer Games Fest because none of the big three are gonna be there. Sort of. Despite this, I still thought it was a pretty good showing. I also love their emphasis on indie games. The Blumhouse games and Outer Sloth announcements were both things you honestly wouldn't expect at a showcase like this, but they were here and given the attention they deserved. Additionally, there were a ton of indie games shown off by themselves too, and the people holding the show know how important indie games are to the industry. I would give Summer Games Fest 2024 a B. It was better than the state of play and had a lot of amazing looking games shown off, but it didn't have that big wow moment that makes presentations like this is great. I think a lot of people would give this presentation a lower ranking, but I thought there was a lot to love here. And now, it's time for the final presentation of the video, the Xbox Showcase. This is by far the presentation I was most excited about. Xbox has had a pretty good track record with their presentations in recent years. I mean, the one in 2022 got me to buy an Xbox Series S. However, Microsoft has been in the news lately for some not so great reasons, and I know a lot of people, including myself, are pretty upset with them right now. Regardless, I was still excited to see what they had to show off, and based on what they've done in previous years, I had good reason to. The showcase opened up with a cinematic trailer for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Now, I'm gonna preface this entire discussion with the fact that I'm not really a Call of Duty fan. The recent games just haven't interested me, and that's probably because most people have unanimously agreed they aren't very good. I might as well just talk about the cinematic trailer and the direct right now instead of splitting the discussion up, so here we go. First off, I like how the countdown was interrupted and led into the trailer. That was pretty cool. The cinematic trailer got me hyped up for the rest of the presentation to be honest, but it was mostly just cinematics without a lot of gameplay. Luckily, there was a 25 minute direct right after the presentation focused on the game. I don't have a whole lot to say because as I said I'm not a huge Call of Duty fan, but this honestly looks pretty good. From what I can tell, the developers are trying to make this the best game it can be, and are listening to a lot of criticism people have had with previous entries. They're completely rehauling the movement system and putting a lot of emphasis on creating a strong campaign, which is something you don't really see from games that are mostly multiplayer like this nowadays. And the fact that the game is on Game Pass at launch means I'll probably try it out as well. The next big announcement was Doom The Dark Ages. Unfortunately, this game was leaked a few weeks beforehand, so it wasn't a surprise that it was here, but it was still really cool to see and the game looks pretty fun. I played a bit of Doom 2016, but I never finished it, nor have I played Eternal. So I'll have to try both of those games out before Doom the Dark Ages launches in 2025. Both Starfield and Fallout 76 are getting some substantial DLC. As someone who hasn't played either game, all I can say is looks cool and I hope the fans are happy. For real though, I do want to play more of Bethesda's games including these two, so it's cool that they're getting more support. Expedition 33 is a gorgeous turn-based RPG that implements action mechanics in the same vein is Paper Mario. We didn't see a whole lot of the combat in this trailer, but it looks pretty interesting and I can't wait to see more. This was a highlight of the presentation for myself and many others, so I'm excited for it to launch on Game Pass day one in 2025. Then directly after we had South of Midnight, which is a really stylish action adventure game. The cutscenes and animation intrigue me, but I just wish we got to see more of the actual gameplay. Regardless, I'm excited for this game to be another day one Game Pass launch in 2025. World of Warcraft and Sea of Thieves are getting some big updates, and as someone who hasn't played either of those 
those games, all I can say is looks cool and I hope the fans are happy. The Metal Gear Solid 3 remake got another trailer and it looks pretty cool. I haven't played a Metal Gear game before and I've heard that Snake Eater is one of the best ones, so maybe I'll try it out. There's still no release date, unfortunately, but it should still be coming out in 2024, I think? Flintlock The Siege of Dawn is a fun looking Souls light that is coming out in like a month. It's coming to Game Pass too, so I'll probably try this one out. I've been in a big Souls like mood recently, so this is pretty good timing for this to come out. Then, we finally got another look at the Perfect Dark reboot. For those unaware, this game has been announced for a long time, almost as long as Metroid Prime 4. I really like the stealth and parkour mechanics the game has, and I'm excited to see more. Unfortunately, we still don't even have a release window for this game, not even 2025. I just hope the game isn't stuck in development purgatory for too much longer, and that it will at least be released next year. Now, this was around the halfway point of the presentation, and Matt Booty came out to talk to us about Diablo 4 DLC, which then led into an almost four minute long cinematic trailer for the DLC with absolutely zero gameplay. Mind you, this is for DLC that that's releasing in four months. Now, this was around when I started to notice the big problem with this presentation, cinematic trailers. This show was filled with them, which is something that a lot of these kinds of showcases usually struggle with, but it felt especially bad here. It was just trailer after trailer with minimal gameplay, if any, and the games honestly just started to blend together. I wish they just made some of these trailers shorter and focused more on the actual gameplay because wow are some of these a drag. Most of them are perfectly fine, but there are a few that had me yawning while I was watching, especially towards the end. Moving on though, we have Fable, which looks pretty good, but again, it's another mostly cinematic trailer. I haven't played a Fable game before, but this is another one where it's launching on Game Pass day one in 2025, so I might as well try it when it comes out. Mixtape looks like a really fun and heartfelt adventure, and despite it not having much gameplay, it brought me out of my cinematic trailer and do slump because of the aesthetic and art style. A new Life is Strange game was announced, and the story of this one is pretty interesting. Traveling between two parallel worlds to piece together a murder mystery is a great idea with a lot of story potential, so I'll definitely have to check it out. Then we got another trailer for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and it was six minutes long and mostly cinematic. I honestly don't mind this one as much though because I'm a big Indiana Jones fan, but I could see people who aren't fans finding this part really boring. The extended cutscene felt like I was watching a scene out of one of the movies in the best way. I didn't realize how excited I really was for this game until watching this trailer, but I'm definitely going to be playing it when it comes out. However, it still doesn't have a release date yet, which sucks, but it should still be coming out this year, please. Assassin's Creed Shadows got a spotlight for some reason. Why was this here? All it did was blend in with everything else at the most boring part of the showcase, and this was a game we already knew a lot about. Why not have this at Summer Games Fest where, hmm, I don't know, Ubisoft's other big game coming out this year, Star Wars Outlaws, was shown off? Ubisoft also has their own presentation, which I'm not watching or talking about because, let's be honest, that would just waste everyone's time. And they showed both of these games off in that presentation, so why is it in this one? It's not like they needed more, this presentation was long enough anyway. But here we are with the second to last trailer which was for Stalker 2 which looks cool and is coming to Game Pass in 3 months. Neat. And to end off the show we got the official announcement of Gears of War E-Day. This trailer was only cinematics but I see fans of the series talking about how it's finally going back to the Gears of War they know and love. All because they added the of war back after removing it for the fifth game? Look look, I know E-Day is a big deal, it has some lore significance, I've never played one of these games before so I have no place to talk. As long as the fans are happy, that's all that matters, and pretty much all Gears of War fans seems to be satisfied with this one. And that was the Xbox presentation. Overall, I thought there were a ton of big announcements here, and I feel like no matter what kind of gamer you are, there was at least one thing that interested you. The pacing while watching was kind of absolutely dreadful, but watching it back after and being able to skip through things I didn't care about wasn't that bad. The thing I did like a lot was that Xbox didn't just rely on popular franchises when it came to big announcements. Games like Expedition 33, South of Midnight, and Mixtape were all given the attention they deserved and were definitely highlights of the presentation for me. But they did still have things for the mega fans like Doom the Dark Ages, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and Gears of War E-Day. And the fact that almost all of the games shown off here are launching on Game Pass Day 1 makes it so a lot of the games I would normally find interesting but most likely not end up playing because I needed another copy of Pikmin or something 
all end up playing now because they're put on that service. This is always a huge plus with the Xbox shows, which is why they've been pretty well received over the last few years. There's a lot to be excited about here, and many people are saying that this is the best showcase they've had in years. I mostly agree, but the pacing was kind of a deal breaker for me considering it a true 10 out of 10. I'll give it an A-. minus. Alright, so out of the three presentations, which one was the best? Well, I kinda already gave the rankings of B- for the State of Play, B for Summer Game Fest, and A- for the Xbox Showcase, but I'm still gonna compare them. The State of Play was not that great, but was absolutely carried by Monster Hunter and Astrobot. If one or both of them weren't there, it would probably be like a C or a D. The Summer Game Fest show was pretty good and well-paced, but they didn't have anything that big to show off, and most of the stuff I was interested in were things we already knew about going in. Xbox had the opposite problem, I think, because it had a ton of huge announcements, but was horribly paced and was filled to the brim with long cinematic trailers. Regardless, I still think cool announcements outweigh bad pacing, so that's why it ultimately got the win. Between all these showcases, there's a lot to be excited about, and so many of these games have already made their way onto my wishlist. The rest of 2024, and especially 2025, is packed, and at the end of the day, that's all I can ask from these presentations. As long as they have good looking games that I want to play filling out the release schedule for the next few months or so, I'm happy. Sure, Sony goofed up with their showcase, but I'm still looking forward to Astro Bots, so at the end of the day, who's really winning? <laughs> well, it sure isn't me because I'm already putting my money in. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I'm gonna need a little bit of a break. Yes, yeah, so I posted this video and the Steam Deck video, which are both, I guess on average, like 20 minutes long within a week, so I'm a little burnt out. So I'm gonna take some time to take a break and also work on some bigger projects that I wanna get out over the summer. Obviously, as I stated in the video, I'm still gonna be making a video on the Nintendo Direct when that comes out, but other than that, stay tuned for July. Yeah, because I have a really big video that I plan on getting out then. I will tell you that plan at the end of the Nintendo Direct video if you're that interested. You can also, you know, check my community tab and stuff. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! -hoo!